In this video, I'm gonna be answering all of your questions that you commented on my 30 day Merv challenge video. And at the end, I'm also gonna be giving you some tips as to how you can improve your time when doing the Merv challenge. Coming up. What's going on you guys? My name's Matt and I just wanna start this video off by saying a massive thank you to everybody who has donated and sponsored me on my 30 day Harry challenge in memory of my granddad. If you do still wanna support by sending a donation to the NHS, I'm gonna be sticking a link in the description below for you to do that. I'm gonna be posting that video to this channel next week. So make sure you subscribe and press the bell button so you don't miss that when it gets posted. But today I'm gonna to be talking specifically about the Murph challenge and answering your questions. Now, if you don't know what the Murph challenge is, don't worry, because I'm about to tell you. It's a CrossFit workout that consists of a one mile run, 300 squats, 200 push-ups, 100 pull-ups, and then another mile run. Now, I did that every single day for 30 days, and by the way, that was exhausting, and I also filmed it. So if you haven't seen that video, click on the link up here or in the link in the description below and you'll be able to check that out. How about we stop wasting time and go straight into the comments section and start answering your questions. First question is from Ian Geddes and it is what sort of exercise, if any, had you been doing most recently before you took on the Murph Challenge? Now, I actually started the Murph Challenge midway through lockdown, so I actually hadn't done any exercise at all for like three weeks, but prior to that, I was going to the gym maybe two, three times a week and swimming, doing cardio for maybe two, three times a week. But growing up, I used to compete nationally as a swimmer, so I was actually swimming like five to seven times a week. Haven't really done that since because exhausting, by the way but three weeks before, hadn't done any exercise. Second question from Mark, but why do I shout when I do these videos? The microphone's only there and you can probably hear me very well. And it's actually hurting my voice, so I'm not gonna shout anymore. Mark Belgrave asked, thank you for your comment, by the way. How can I scale the Merv, specifically the pull-ups? Can't do more than three currently with proper form. Well, don't worry, at the start of my Merv challenge, it was very, very difficult to do the full set, the full set of 10. I was actually doing like eight, and then I'd have to have a break and then continue the next two. So the best piece of advice to get around that would be break your sets up into smaller amounts. But secondly, don't worry, at the start of the Merv, as you are starting to condition those muscles, it's going to be very, very difficult. As you go along later throughout the Merv challenge, all of those exercises will become a lot easier. The second question was, did you mess with pre-workout at all during the 30 days? No, I've never actually done pre-workout. The only thing that I do before a workout is eat a banana because that's really beneficial. High in potassium, great source of carbohydrates. So the next question is from Kevin Bresson. Do you by chance still have your splits for your 39.51 time? No, I don't, unfortunately. But if you pause the video when I run up to the camera, you can kind of see the times that I got from like set number six to set number nine. Next question from Bojangles87. Thank you for your comment, my friend. What stretches did you find best before and after, and did you have to adapt them throughout the challenge? Legs, absolutely, 100%, without question, legs. The leg swing is my favorite thing. People used to really laugh at me for doing that. I actually used to do that before swimming competitions, and whenever I went swimming in general, and people would be like, why are you doing gymnastics? Why are you doing ballet? I'm not, I'm just trying to stretch my legs. Dynamic stretches, very important. Now, for stretching my chest, put my arm up against the wall and stretch it in order to stretch the pectoral muscles. But biggest piece of advice would absolutely be do stretches before your workout from the start. Don't make the mistake I did, it was very sore. Next question, Ben W, what was your goal when working out? What body part do you like working on the most? My goal when working out was absolutely to maintain my times and to improve my times. That was my ultimate goal. And guess what? I did it and I'm very happy about that. Second question was, what body part do you like working on the most? Um, I guess that would suggest like when you go to the gym, what are you most likely to work out? I'd say the chest. I think every guy just likes banging the weights and just going boom and yeah, lifting, bench press, chest press, that press, 
and then go to the juice press. Next question, Ewan Bosveld. Thanks for your comment, my guy. Were you in a calorie cut during the Murph? If so, by how much? No, actually it was more like a calorie increase because for some reason I thought it'd be a good idea to get the serious mass optimum nutrition, which is just full of calories. So actually that stopped me from shredding, as you can see, because I started taking them from day 18 onwards. Too many calories, probably wouldn't advise that if you're trying to get slim and trim. Next question, Mr. Messinosta, out of curiosity, what did you find was the hardest part of the Murph? Actually, it wasn't physical, it was the mental aspect of it. Probably at about day 14, after two weeks, you'd endured the first week, which is obviously the most intense. And at the end of week one, you feel exhausted. Into week two, you're starting to feel a little bit better, a little bit healthier. At the end of week two, it's like, I've got to do that exact same thing again. And actually being able to stay motivated and determined to finish the 30 day Murph challenge, that was probably the most difficult part. Next comment is from King's Refuge. Hey bro, for sure you're going to blow up soon. Thank you. If you want another fitness challenge, do the Marsoc short card. It's really intense. Keep it up. Thank you so much for your comment, by the way, King's Refuge. By the way, Marsoc short card, that's one of the videos that's come into this channel. So thank you for the suggestion. Please, by the way, if you do know any other fitness workouts that I could do like 30 day ones, let me know in the comment section and I'll go check them out. But the Marsoc short card is definitely one that I'm gonna do, so thank you. Last but not least, we've got Janaid stuff. How were you able to do everything on the first day? I feel like dying all the time. I'll be honest, day one was easier because I was fully rested. Actually, no, I vomited. What am I talking about? But day two, day three, that's when it got really, really difficult because I was aching and I've not used those muscles in a long time. But honestly, mate, I would not worry just because it gets easier. The first two weeks, it is so, so difficult. But as you start to condition those muscle groups, you'll find it starts to become a lot easier. So just push through, just continue. Don't give up. I feel like I sound like every single self-help person now. Tony Robbins, don't give up. Continue, motivate, self-discipline, work hard, don't sleep, don't rest, don't ever sleep. But that is it for the questions. Thank you so much for commenting and asking me questions. If you have any more questions that you wanna know about my Murph that I haven't already answered, let me know in the comment section below and I will reply to your comment. I don't know what that was, that was me trying to use a keyboard, but yeah. I'll do that and reply to your comment. So next I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to improve your Murph workout. Now at the end of my 30 day Murph workout video, you can actually see I already included some of the most important tips. I'm not gonna repeat them at this video. So if you wanna find them out, go check out that video and you'll be able to hear those tips. So the first tip is don't be afraid to break up your Murph challenge. So I decided to do it in 10 sets of 30 squats, 20 press ups, 10 pull ups, but don't feel like you can't do 20 sets of 15 squats, 10 push ups, and five pull-ups, that might be more manageable for you. My next tip would be make sure you try and find flat ground. Now I did my mile run, both my mile runs up a huge incline and that was exhausting and it would have also affected my time massively. Tip number three would be be overhydrated. And when I say that, I don't mean just go crazy and just drink loads literally before the workout because otherwise you'll be on a full stomach and you do not want to be doing that. Make sure you're doing it for a few hours prior to your workout. It will really help, especially on a hot day. Tip number four would be use a stop clock, use your phone and use the lap button because otherwise you will lose track as how many sets you've done. Tip number five would be use splits because that's gonna help you plan for the future workout. If you find that you're doing the first few in like two minutes and then you're doing the last few in like six minutes, you clearly need to pace yourself better on the sets. So definitely use the splits in order to evaluate your Murph. So that has been my Q&A Murph challenge video. I hope some of these tips have been helpful. Please write a comment in the comment section below if I haven't answered one of your questions and you do have any questions about the Murph. I will be happy to go through them and answer them. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at ChristianMJC. Smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to get notified. Thank you for watching this video and I shall see you guys in the next one.